and we're back guys i'm your host good energy welcome to tennis in a minute i give you the rundown on tennis coverage every day and things are heating up here in france we have the other half of the quarterfinal to be played and it's going to be fireworks let's start things off with mira and dreva from the federation taking on arena sabalenka who hits hard Sabalenka scares me, guys, and look, I say it all the time. She could probably get one of those forehands past me. That's how hard she hits. But again, I want to thank you guys for all the love and support. Thanks for supporting the channel, and um, let's get right into it. Listen, this is going to be a tough match for Mira, right? Uh, Mira just turned 17 recently, taking on the 26-year-old Sabalenka. Now, a lot of people don't necessarily think that Mira is for real, but for the athletes that have been really good their entire life, the natural athletes that were just born with it, you know there's a time in your life when you're, you know, a teenager, you're competing and you're beating adult, you're beating adults, right? I've had that experience as a young teenager just playing adults in different pickup games and just being better than them. Yes, it's possible. It happens. Mira has the talent. Now, the thing that I look at, though, is her big sister, Erica. Now, when you are the younger sibling and you're coming up in a family, normally... That household, in terms of talent, you guys are around the same level, right? Normally, you're around the same level. What's mind-boggling to me is how good Mira is. And look, I, I don't want to put Erica on blast again. This channel is about giving the players their flowers. But this is a part where, I look, I have to give some criticism. And this is fair criticism. And I say it all the time. It's about giving fair criticism, you know, without disrespecting anyone. I'm surprised that Mira is that much better than Erica, right? What would happen if they played? Now, we know that Venus and Serena played several times on the main tour. Serena got the best of most of those matchups, but it wasn't always like that. Early on in their career, Venus used to dominate Serena. That's a well-known fact. Venus brought the fame and fortune to that household. It started with Venus, and then Serena took the torch and carried on to be the greatest female tennis player of all time. But right now, if Mera were to play Erica, I think she beats Erica. And I talked about last year how, you know, Mera went on that little rant of just smashing her racket on the ground. Well, where do you think she got it from at 16 years old? She got it from her big sister, okay? She got it from Erica because Erica's gone nutty lately on tour, slamming her racket down, yelling and screaming. This is where Mira, that, that's a learned behavior. Mira learned it from her big sister. And for crying out loud, it needs to stop. And I think it has stopped because she has won and she's doing she's doing good, right? She's got literally 80 plus percent win percentage on clay. 80 plus win percentage on tour. She's solid. I mean, we saw her take out Potapova early on in her career a couple of years ago, right? One of the bigger wins of her career as a 15 year old. But what can she do against Sabalenka? This this is the question. She's here after taking out Emma Betkas, Victoria Azarenka. And look, I said, Vika will never disrespect Sabalenka again. When she disrespected Sabalenka at the U.S. Open, Sabalenka, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. she And she did beat Sabalenka. She said, look, I'm just better than her. I thought that was disrespectful coming from the same country to put your fellow countrywoman on blast like that. But Sabalenka has not lost to Vika since. Here's the thing as a competitor. And I would tell my players this. You do not want to give your opponent any motivation that they can use to play harder. 
And I felt Vika should have kept her mouth shut since she talked reckless about Sabalenka. Sabalenka has destroyed her with the exception of that following match. Sabalenka has destroyed her. Do not give your opponent any ammo, ammunition to come back and play harder. Don't do it. Stay disciplined. Be quiet. Play humble. Okay. Play relaxed. Play possum. Do not go in there talking trash, motivating your opponent. Don't do it. And this is why I like Elena Rabakina, because not only is she talking trash, she's backing it up. And you know, look, she does, I get the feeling she doesn't like Ika. She doesn't like Ika. I mean, it's, it's, they're cordial on the court, you know. So, of course, they're not going to be cat fighting. But on the court, I get the feeling they don't really like each other. And I think it's mutual. But she took out Vika. She took out Stearns. A good win against Stearns, who's young, fast, athletic, strong. But I felt Stearns needed at least three to four more shots to even be in the rally. Miro's just too fast at getting to the point. And she's good at defense. She has a long wingspan. She can close out. And she gets balls back. I'm very impressed with her wingspan. And she took out Favara, who Favara, I mean, you know, when we're looking at the best of the best when it comes to juniors. And we're looking at some of the newcomers on tour. I mean, I kind of consider Vavara in that list of newcomers. I felt Vavara last year around the ATX. I felt she was playing her best tennis. You know, I felt she was really playing her best tennis. And... I thought she turned the corner. She kind of took a step back, you know, about mid last season. But I do think Vivara is for real. I think she's for real, but it's tough because the tour, it's in a new region every week. And it's really tough. I feel ladies, I feel the travel schedule really sets ladies back. And I talked about, you know, how we used to play tournaments and travel and you end up in a in a nice country where you want to try the food, you want to, you know, sightsee. You can gain a couple pounds and you're out of shape quick. So you really have to be disciplined. And it's it's at the end of the day, it shows how disciplined Ega is, right? If you want to be number one, you can't have a life. You have to dedicate to your craft. And I feel right now at only 17, you're seeing how dedicated Mira is, right? It's not... And and this is why I love watching her interviews because it's where like Chuck E. Cheese, where a kid can be a kid. It's like where Mira she lets out and she's so sweet and she's a nice girl, nice young lady. But she's taking on Sabalenka, who finds herself here after taking out Big Sister. You think you think Mira doesn't want revenge for knocking out her big sister? She's gonna take this personal, guys. And she beat uh, Uchima, Badosa, her bestie, and Navarro. I was very impressed by the win over Navarro. But again, I've said in the past, Navarro is still green, you know. So, I mean, I, I don't want to crown her just yet. But I do think she's a younger version of Jessica Pagula. Uh, you know, of course, they're both billionaire dollar. They're both billionaire daughters. But I do think Navarro plays a lot like Pegula. But again, I've said I don't want to crown her just yet because I don't want to put too much pressure on Navarro because I feel, look, she went to college. She she became polished as a serious contender. But she's only really been on the tour for, and, and I mean in terms of just a household name, six to eight months. So I don't want to put too much pressure on Navarro. Whereas Coco's been dominating since like 14 years old, winning the Orange Bowl, 13 years old, you know, winning Junior Slams. So Coco being on the scene, beating Venus at 15, she's kind of been in the limelight dealing with this a lot longer. So I don't want to put too much pressure on Emma because I feel Emma's probably going to blossom within the next couple years, along with Katie Volinets when we're talking about American tennis. Those are going to be the future of American tennis, along with Coco. Uh, a lot of people are wondering, what's up with Alicia Parks? Well, listen, Alicia Parks got a raw deal, guys. I mean, they did not give her the opportunity to defend her championship in Lyon, France, for whatever reason. She found herself having to qualify for another tournament. She lost all those points literally overnight. She went from rank inside the top 50 to outside the top 100. It's just a bad 
bad draw. It's a bad hand, and it happens. Uh, if I were coaching Alicia Parks, I would say, look, let's work on a specific game plan. Uh, let's work on strategic situational leadership where we can go to certain plays, certain scenarios, depending on the score of the match. Um, let's continue to work on the serve. We cannot leave practice until you get 10 first serves in play. When our practice time has expired, that's right. If, if our practice schedule is from 6 to 8, when 8 o'clock comes, you cannot leave until we get 10 first serves in play, no faults, right down the line, down the tee, wherever, whatever we're doing for jamming the body. Continue to practice the serve. Let's continue to practice our long rallies, right? Let's not only become that one-two puncher like Sabalenka, but let's also focus on deep rallies, right? Uh, I'll bring in hitting, hitting partners. I want to see 30-shot rallies. Right. I want to time you 10 minutes straight without missing a shot. So you have to think outside the box when it comes to training and coaching. And as someone that was dunking a basketball at 12 years old, I can tell you guys, you you do have to put in the work. You have to put in the work and it shows. And again, if you want to be at the top and number one, you cannot have a personal life. You can't. And yes, when you do finally reach that fame and you start reaping the fortune, that will come with obligations like media obligations, commitments, endorsements, sponsors, and things like that. But we have to keep the priority of putting in the work in the gym. And again, if I were coaching this top tier talent, we would think outside the box. We have to make sure that we're ahead of the competition, but it starts with putting in the work, different types of drills, and, and hitting techniques, you know, I see a lot of the ladies practice and I'll be honest with you, a lot of the routine is really to just kind of, it's really to kind of stay loose and kind of keep a form. But in terms of taking it to the next level, there's a lot. And, and again, you are coaching females, so you can't necessarily work them how the ATP guys train. But we can take it up a, a level. We can take it up a notch to where you can really see some improvements. And all it takes, Kobe Bryant said the best. If you want to be an expert at something, it takes 30 minutes a day at least for five years straight. So all of these ladies are experts. But the problem is the tour is so good, you literally have to make sure you're out training your opponents every day. And look, my players, if I were coaching any of these players after the match, we're going back to the practice court. Yes, we, we are going to whip you in the best shape. We're, I don't even want to touch a tennis ball, a racket, until I know your form and your conditioning is top tier elite. I want to make sure your conditioning is perfect before we even pick up a tennis ball, right? We got to make, I got to make sure your lungs are expanded and open. I got to make sure if you get into a 20, 30 shot rally, you're not going to fade. If you get into a two set, deep, grueling three set match that you're not going to get winded. It's all about the conditioning and the stamina. And we're seeing why Iga's dominating the tour and Coco's there too. And we're going to, we're, we're going to get back to Mira and Sabalenka, but the reason I'm saying this is I'm going to pivot shortly is take Iga out of Coco's draws. Iga's a multiple slam champion. Uh, take, take, um, excuse me, take Iga out of Coco's draws and Coco's a multiple slam champion. Correct. That's, that's a fact. We know that take Iga out of Coco's draws. Coco has numerous slams. So Coco's really good. So when we're talking about the big three, she belongs there. She deserves there. Elena Rabakina is going to have to show me a little bit more with the stamina. But the reality here is I don't think Rabakina beats Coco. I've been saying it for the longest. Coco owns a head-to-head. -head. I do not think Rabakina beats Coco. I do not think. So you saw what Coco did to Anz. Anz is the best shot maker in the world. Take someone like Rabakina, who she's going to get her aces, but once the ball's in play, 
what is she going to do to Coco when the ball's in play? She, she, Rebecca can't defend like Coco. She can't. I love Rebecca. And look, I, it's all about fair criticism. And this is not to disrespect any of the players. That's not the, that's not the objective. I love Rebecca. And I love the way she's stepping up the game with her trash talk. And it's sweet. And it's honest, right? It's not really trash talk because she's being honest. She's speaking the truth. What is Rebecca going to do to Coco when the ball's in play? Come on, guys. Coco's going to run circles around her. So the matchmakers need to make this happen again. Because I've been saying it for a while and I don't think a lot of people believe us. And I don't really like what An said in her in her press match, uh, in the post-match interview, talking about, you know, I think, you know, Coco, if they make a a, a big four, she'll be right there. It's it's really, and I love An's, but it's really taking pressure off of Coco being so young and you know you you know the saying, the nerve of mediocrity. It's not like Ons is mediocre, but you kind of have to discredit someone so young. You know, it kind of makes you look a little better. But the reality here is, guys, I don't think Rebecca beats Coco. Therefore, by default, she she hasn't already, and Coco's a lot better player. So by default, the big three is Iga, Sabalenka, and Coco. But, all right, I'm getting off topic here. I can go on and on, guys. Because I'm passionate about tennis. And if you're listening to me, then you love tennis as much as I do. And the goal is to push this sport forward. Tennis will be a dominant sport. Much like NFL, MLB, NBA. Trust me. The next 5 to 10 years, we're going to take it there, guys. That's the goal. But nonetheless, let's let's get to a prediction, guys. Because we also have to talk about Rebecca and Polini. Here's the problem with Mira. Now, Mira is fighting to get this last Russian spot. Now, Anna Kalinskaya, she did bump out Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova. So, the top spots are Ekaterina. No, I'm sorry. Dasha, number one. Ludmilla, number two. Katerina, number three. And Kalinskaya, number four. By the way, congratulations to the relationship with Yannick. And listen, guys, look, I should have shot my shot. I, I Look, I didn't know she was single. I would have shot my shot. Listen, guys, if you want to pick a serious pick, I do like Carlos to beat um, center. I, I think Carlos is going to beat center. Uh, yes, I've given you the underdog picks on center several times versus Carlos Alcarez, but not here in, in, in France. I do like Carlos to beat center. Uh, I like him to beat center outright. So, that's a serious pick. But nonetheless, um, this match here, here's the problem. Sabalenka, she's just too strong. She's really too strong. And Mira, she does a good job of going to top spin. But Mira needs to win this match to make the Olympics. She's literally only, it's not even 200 points behind Anna Kalinskaya. Not even 200 points. If she wins this match, she will get, uh, I want to say, 700, 800 points. So she'll be sitting comfortably in that last spot to represent Russia. But can she beat Sabalenka? I just, I don't see it. I don't see how. It's just, there's a big strength difference. And Sabalenka is just going, she's going to serve well, minus her faults and double faults. To the point where Mira's going to have trouble returning her shots. She's going to have trouble stepping up, defending. She's going to have trouble defending the drop shot. I do think Sabalenka's game for a long time, it's it's just been so redundant. It's just been so plain Jane, right? Just trying to overpower you. And I've admitted in the past, you know, I kind of stopped watching her matches because it's it's really the same thing, much like Georgie Ostapenko. It's it's there's no real strategy. It's just overpowering you. Serve forehand cross court. It's been the same thing, and it gets a little boring after a while. You know, I, I you know of course I watch the big matches where she plays Eager or or, or Rabakina, but overall her matches it, they're really boring. And, you know, it's not like Coco running up around the court 
everywhere getting balls back and doing these amazing plays or ons with these amazing trick shots. It's the same thing. Serve, step up, cross court. Serve, step up, cross court. Same shots, you know. If Mara's going to win, here's the thing. She can't just use top spin against Sabalenka. She's going to have to get aggressive and it's going to be a firefight. And I just don't think she has the arsenal. I don't think Mira has the weaponry. I don't think she has the machinery to go bomb for bomb with Sabalenka. So by default, I have to take Sabalenka to win this match. I would love Mira to get into the Olympics, but she's got plenty of time. You know, when she's 21, I'm sure she'll probably be the number one Russian. But I just don't see how Mira can win this match. Even though she's very good, she has all the tools. It looks like Sabalenka is going to be in yet another semifinal. And look, she's going to be right there, either facing Polini or Rubakina. So stay tuned. We're going to talk about that match next. But I like Sabalenka to, to, to defeat Mira. I just don't see a way that Mira can beat her. I don't see how Mira can do it. She, she's just not strong enough. And in tennis, especially females tennis, power plays a big difference because that can put you on the back foot right away especially if someone can stretch you like Sabalenka it's just bad and then you factor in the drop shot Sabalenka's drop shot is really accurate because she's tall she's got a long reach she can clear the net easy I just don't see how Miro's going to beat Sabalenka I, I don't see it I'm not going to say miracles can't happen Sabalenka can play a bad match and it can happen you know, she's Mira's lost twice. She's due for a win sooner or later, but I just don't see it today. Sabalenka gets the win. That's the pick, guys. Stay tuned for the next video.